This is a can of tuna. It's got about 40 grams of protein and just 220 calories. It goes for about 160 a can or even less if you buy it in bulk. But some people, me included, don't like the taste of cat food. So in this video, I'll show you four ways to elevate your canned tuna into delicious restaurant dishes ish. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Quok, and this first one is something I make for myself pretty frequently. It's a tuna burger. Listen, you take a bun and you put something in it with some sauce, chances are it'll be pretty good. Now canned tuna is very mushable, and I know that sounds weird, but it's perfect for a patty. We will drain a can of tuna and deposit it into a bowl. Then on top of it, I'll crack open a small can of beans, and I'm not even gonna drain it. I'm just gonna kinda put it on top. Now I'm gonna start mushing with a fork. And the beans are gonna help stick everything together just like they do in your digestive tract. Now we're gonna crack an egg and mix it in. And there's several options on how we can bring the mixture to a proper consistency. I went with some breadcrumbs, but sometimes I also use oats. Just use enough until you get a texture that would like instantly choke you if you tried chugging it. Season it with uh, whatever your heart desires. And don't worry, before eating it, we're gonna cook it. Form some thick balls using your hands and then form them into patties like this. Once the pan is ready for your balls, we're gonna sear them for about two minutes on each side. I also like salting them on the pan directly. Now, sometimes I just eat them straight like this, but this is a special occasion, so I'll make a simple sauce with Greek yogurt, of course, a little squeeze of lemon, thyme, pepper, and salt. Mix it up and boom, you got a sauce. Now all that's left to do is to assemble this burger. And I was super lazy today, so I just cut straight through the middle of this bun. I sauced up both sides and gingerly placed my patty in the middle. Some more sauce on top and this is a can of jalapenos. That works very well with uh, just about anything. Some fresh rocket. And there you go, just fold it up and you got a delicious tuna burger. It's as easy as uh, making a regular burger, which is pretty fairly easy. Give it some love because it deserves it and then eat it and uh, enjoy it. All right, this next one is perfect if you're looking for a quick, nutritious meal that can feed lots of people really fast. Or maybe just one really hungry person. This is spicy tuna fried rice. So let's prep our veggies. I got a scallion, a hot pepper, and a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm getting all of these cut up and ready for the pan because this is our flavor base. Oh, and uh, hold on to that green onion leafy part because we're gonna need it later. Let's get cracking with three eggs in a bowl, give them a good beating, and we're gonna gently cook them in a pan. I'm not too concerned with these eggs because they'll just be another topping for our rice, which is why I totally screwed up this flip. Get this roughly chopped, and now, in the same pan, we're gonna go in with our flavor, boys. We're gonna get these boys to know each other before cracking open a fresh can of tuna. And this is tuna in olive oil. Go in with the tuna, mix all those flavors up, and now a very quick word on rice. You're gonna need leftover rice for this, but in case you didn't have any, like me, you can buy this pre-cooked rice that is much, much drier, so it's really perfect for this dish. So just dump that rice in and uh, mix it up. And now for our sauce, we'll mix some soy sauce, some fish sauce, some sugar and rice vinegar. And then just transfer it into our main pan. Followed by, of course, our chopped up omelette. And watch these simple ingredients come together to form this wonderful fried rice. See, cooking isn't that hard, guys. Top it off with those green onions and some sesame seeds if you have them. It's not the prettiest thing, but it's packed with flavor, trust me. Look how happy it makes me. Now, an equally simple but fancier dish is this tuna pasta. I know it doesn't sound that great, but trust me guys, it's really something special. We'll start again by prepping our flavor base, which is yet again a hot pepper and some garlic, to which I had to apply some CPR before cutting. And very important, some fresh lemon zest. It works really well with the tuna. For this dish, I'll use farfalle. But you can probably get away with just about any noodle in a pan with a significant amount of olive oil. Let's deposit our flavor boys and make sure they have a really good time there. We want to get all that good flavor out. Now some more flavor. These are capers. And if you like them, I would highly recommend getting them in there. And essentially all we got to do to form our sauce is use a bit of that good old pasta water that's packed with starch. And just transfer the al dente pasta in the pan. On top of that, I'll open a can of olive oil tuna and just get it in there with the oil and everything it doesn't matter all those oils and starches will get together in just a bit of time and form this silky creamy sauce 
And we're gonna finish this up with some freshness, some rocket salad that of course eventually disappeared into the heat. Also some lemon juice and make sure you have lots of cuts on your fingers when you do this. After I plated, I added some more fresh rocket and some more lemon zest. And this is a fresh lemony tuna caper pasta. And this was really, really, really good. And I couldn't eat it because my hungry girlfriend immediately snatched it. Uh, hope you liked it, Christina. <clears throat> okay, now this last one is a bit different. And I gotta be honest with you guys, it was a fail. I always wanted to try those tuna mayo onigiris. So I decided to try to do them myself as a snack. And they were really good, but they definitely didn't look that great. My biggest mistake was not making my own sushi rice. I got lazy, okay? And I bought a pre-cooked version and it just wasn't sticky enough. I seasoned it with some sesame oil and uh, struggled a lot trying to form these onigiri rice balls. I mean, I kinda got somewhere at the end. For my filling, I went very simple with just tuna and kewpie mayo until I ran out of kewpie mayo and just had to use regular mayo. And yeah, I just placed the filling inside these rice balls and seared them on both sides in a pan. I got a bit fancy and brushed the sides with a soy sauce and sugar mixture, but it didn't help much because the nori wasn't sticking properly and you couldn't even pick it up because uh, it was all just falling apart. But yeah, as I said, they weren't that bad taste-wise. It was just a bit of a fail, so you know, better luck next time. So these were four ways to elevate your canned tuna, guys. I believe in using simple, accessible ingredients to create dishes that just about anyone can make. So this video was all about that. And real quick before I go, I want to thank you guys. Look at this. Look at that, guys. 900 subscribers. I'm so happy. There's so many new people here. And I want to thank all of you. We're so close to a thousand. It's incredible. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, make sure to click one of these other two videos right here. And I'll see you guys next time. And go make a couple tuna dishes.